Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to take a quick look at the FIFA 21 launch update pitch notes and talk about some of the market impacts that I think we're going to see from this update and from the new information that we found out yesterday from the EA Direct Communication account through these pitch notes. And I think it's going to affect the market, so I want to talk to you guys about that with the new stuff about Icon SBCs, with, of course, the new the EA Access is going to look a lot different this year because of objectives and uh, other content that's going to be coming out. So there's a lot to talk about, and I'm going to get into it fast. I don't want to make this video too long because you guys have already read through this and started to talk about it, but I want to talk about some of the market impacts that we're going to be seeing in the next week and also throughout the course of the year with this stuff related to the launch update with the pitch notes for FIFA 21. Of course, they are made by Yashir, our boy, uh, the lead product manager. Yeah, that's his title, GG's. But anyway, let's start off with early access. I'm gonna get into this right away because this is gonna affect the market a decent amount and it's gonna affect what we decide to do with our 10 hours because there's some new objectives in here that we're gonna have to decide based on how much it requires and how much time it requires. Are the rewards good enough and are they worth it for our time during the EA access. First things first, some people ask me, is this early access just the October 6th timeframe? From the way this reads, it says foot 21 kicks off with early access for EA play members starting October 1st. And this is called early access. So I'm thinking that everything that is, is labeled underneath here is gonna come out at some point during the EA access timeframe, somewhere between October 1st and October 6th, but it will guarantee to come out October 1st through October 9th. So um, I'm not entirely sure how these will launch, like in terms of if they're all going to drop right away, but it's probably going to be in varying order, uh, as we go throughout the game. So first things first, pre launch objectives will be a chance to, will give you a chance to earn a special early access reward pack, which includes an untradeable 80 to 84 overall player pick. That's massive. That's actually pretty awesome for the first stage of the game. And if there's other players that are involved with that pack as well, maybe some stadium items that could be kind of cool. But again, it all depends on how much time or what difficulty of the objective it is to complete. If it's just like play a couple squad battles games and score a goal uh, with a couple players, uh, like with two, a striker with a three-star weak foot or, or better or something like that, then that's a bad example. But uh, that would be easy, right? If it's going to take you a long time to do, if it's going to take you multiple games to get that player pick pack, it's not going to be worth it, right? Because you want to play your squad battle games and get that those rewards, tradable rewards coming to you on that Sunday. So that's, of course, you know, idea number one that you want to do. But some of these are kind of interesting based on how long it takes, right? Of course, we know Team of the Week 1 is going to be out. The players that will be in Team of the Week number one, those players' performances will be this weekend. So today when you're watching this video and tomorrow and some of the games that have already been played from a couple days ago, possibly the league games could be uh, or will be making up team of the week one coming up this next week as we start foot. The launch of season one objectives, we're going to have basically more time to get to level 30. Experience live foot friendlies for the first time with a three nation themed live foot friendly challenge. Again, we'll have to see if there's rewards along with that. And the first event, uh, head start in the humans versus machine community event. Complete the humans machines objectives group to earn an untradeable prime Electrum players pack, which I'm pretty sure is 12 players, six rare. I don't know if you're guaranteed. I think you're guaranteed like a certain amount of golds and a certain amount of like maybe it's four golds, four silvers and four bronzes, but that's a decent pack. So if this humans versus machines objective will take you 20, 30 minutes or two games, I would play two games, maybe even three games to get an untradeable prime Electrum players pack on top of the rewards that I'm already getting. Uh, so I don't know how this event is going to shake out what it's going to require, but that's something to think about again, when we're looking at these objectives, we're going to have to kind of make the decision in that first day or so, is it worth going after based off the rewards that you get? Cause they are untradeable, but these are some decent packs, prime electrum untradeable that could help you out a, a decent amount. And then the 80 to 84 player pick untradeable as well. If it's not too much to go out of your way, it might be worth doing. Now, this is also big market movements from this right here. Once to watch content is actually going to start during early access. The promo itself is not starting until October 9th. We'll read about that in a bit, but there's going to be some OTW content an SBC and a player pick vote. A player pick vote and an SBC are going to be coming out during early access. So technically the very first SBC of FIFA 20 could be a player SBC. 
Uh, well, the first player SBC of FIBA 20 could be a ones to watch player SBC. Can you invest for this? Yes, I think you're going to be able to invest for it if you want to. Check out, again, we're going to be looking in that first week or so, some of the cheapest FIFA 21 players by rating. When they're loaded in here on Footpin, you can see Footpin's ready to go with some of these. I would probably not expect more than an 81 or an 82 rated squad, depending on what the player is. But people are addicted to SBCs at any time of the year. If it's a good enough player that people are th is going to think are worth or if people in this game are going to think is worth it, they're going to go and do that SBC and you might see some market movement. So that might be kind of an investment that nobody's talking about that you might have to get in on and might possibly be able to get on uh, early on this uh, first couple days of EA access. And then again, it goes and describes the player pick vote. The winner will then get an SBC released during the promo. So down to ones to watch. We got three more confirmed players today. Odegaard, Thiago, Hakimi. All right, solid, not bad. They did confirm this is going to be a two-week promo, just like before last year. They really started to do this two-week promo kind of cycle, and it looks like they're going to continue with it. So uh, Team 1 is going to be revealed and released on October 9th. So I don't know. These guys might not all be in Team 1. Some might be in Team 2. We don't know yet. Uh, team 2 is going to be revealed on October 14th on that uh, Wednesday and then released on October 6th, the Friday. So back-to-back -back weeks, two weeks in a row with ones to watch, probably multiple player SBCs, probably multiple objectives. They're going to want to start the year off strong. So SBC fodder honestly continues to pop back up in my mind as something that might be investable and might be tradable during this period, even though it's early, oh, so early on in the game people will still do SBCs if it is a meta, popular, or uh, just good value player. People will do them. But again, if you pre-ordered the Ultimate Edition, you're thinking about when do I open my guaranteed ones to watch pack. October 9th through 16th, when Team 1 is in packs, you'll be able to pack from your pre-order pack just Team 1 players. The next week will be just Team 2. And then if you want to wait till October 21st, which is probably what I'm going to do, we're probably going to have like a ones to watch pre-order pack opening on stream link in the description <laughs> if you want to join that we'll have some fun with those and open those packs on october 21st to have a chance to see uh who we can pull from those packs it might be worth waiting because also maybe a card that you pull has already gotten an inform usually there's one or two otws that get an inform in the first two or three weeks just off of especially this year with more ones to watches that will be out and released most likely um, then there's a higher chance for that to happen. So that's kind of what I'm thinking uh, with ones to watches. I'm kind of excited, honestly, for just the amount of sheer content that it looks like is going to be released just so fast and the amount of different areas for content that we'll have this year. Honestly, for me, it's a bit, not scary, but it's honestly a bit uh, crazy to think about all these different areas of content. We could have something new here this day, new here this day, and new here on this day, and then almost could feel like it might end up being like a cop out for EA Sports at some point. Like, hey, oh, we dropped a new a new foot event today, but we didn't drop any SBC. So, you know, maybe some people don't like playing the game or doing the foot events, but they like the SBC. So they not, might not be happy with that content. So that's just kind of something I feel like we're going to be experiencing throughout the year this year. But let's continue. Live foot friendlies, they said there's going to be starting with live foot friendlies during a... Um, EA access, I guess. So completing certain objectives and live foot friendlies will earn you unique rewards. So that doesn't sound like incredibly tasty off, you know, just reading that, but it could be good. All right, let's go on to programs because this is also big before we get into icon SBCs, meaningful moments, right? Player programs. When I first thought of this, this is, this is what I imagine what player programs were like. And I could be wrong with this. Maybe it's league SBCs, but I almost think that these milestone players might be what they're calling a player program. Because if you kind of read what they were before, uh, certain player items moments will now reflect real world footballing moments. Uh, no, league players. League players is what I'm thinking might be. Uh, well, yeah, right here, man. This is what it says. Syria league player, right? So these are the league players uh, that we had last year. These objectives, right? With Politano, uh, the Bundesliga had Verstrat. We had Shoji, uh, Moy Gomez, Trossard. I mean, a lot of these like weren't that insane, uh, you know, but... Hopefully this year they're better and, you know, looks like there's going to be opportunity for more of those this year with some changes with static permanent upgrades, which is okay. It is what it is. Uh, and they're going to be completed throughout live foot friendlies. So again, they're trying to make it not as sweaty, I think, through some of these objectives. And that's number one thing here through these league players. 
Uh, experiment with squad building to satisfy the objective requirements. Interesting. Uh, with a more even playing field. That's what they're trying to do, right? Because people were so mad about all the objectives being in rivals and being sweaty and everything like that. Seems like they're trying to move away from that with this feature here. Flashback arrows. This is kind of cool. It almost feels to me like it's it's like a snapshot in time, which is exactly what it is. Uh, and then they're going to increase or decrease the rating based on where that player was at that certain point in time. Here's my thing. Why do you have to decrease the player? Why do you have to decrease the stats? Why can't you just leave it the same and then upgrade the sprint speed in this example and upgrade that flashback era item just for that time and, and maybe leave that defensive stat where it was? Why do you have to decrease it? I know it's it's everything in, in FIFA recently, the past couple of years has just been moving more and more and more towards just like in real life and everything is being more realistic and just real. And you know what? I miss, and maybe you guys do too, some of the arcadey feel to the FIFA gameplay. It seems like they've been moving more realistic with the gameplay as well. And I see that again here. Like that's one of their goals, I think, is to make this as most as lifelike as possible in terms of gameplay and even with some of the content they're releasing. Uh, putting players and their stats matching a point in time. So that is kind of cool, but also interesting that they're going to lower stats, which is kind of weird. And then this is the new meaningful moments that we, we talked about earlier. We're not entirely sure how this is going to show up and how they're going to be upgrading these cards, whether it's going to be like through a team of the week or just promo cards or through objectives. Uh, but they're going to be able to upgrade individual stat items. So of course, the Trent Alexander-Arnold with the dead ball specialist with the free kick attribute, they'd be able to raise that without impacting his short and long passing stats. So it just gives EA more chances to upgrade cards. This really wasn't new information. The flashback eras is pretty cool. That card design hopefully is dope. Uh, and we can have some really, really neat cards based on that. So I think out of player programs, that's the one that I'm more stoked for. And again, that's more SBCs, probably some more objectives as well. And that makes the market move because you have cards that are required for SBCs. Uh, you know, maybe Brazilian players get to score goals with a certain nationality, certain league, you know, and that just makes cards move on the market. So we have to be in tune with that stuff a lot, even more than in the years past, because objectives are going to make the market move this year more than they ever have with requirements and a continual added um, just amount of hype on objectives and stuff like that. So last but definitely not least, we're talking about icons. And I want us to talk about this forever. I know a lot of you guys already have, but icons are sort of the same as last year, but also they're different because, excuse me, icon SBCs are back, all right? And I know that's pretty hype, but there's a couple asterisks, I guess. It's like icon SBCs are back. Don't get super hyped because, you know, EA, but... The base, middle, and prime versions and moments versions, it's going to be the exact same as last year. Base and middle start off in packs. Base go out of packs in December. Middle go out of packs in prime. Primes come into packs in December. And then moments come into packs in February. So that's the exact same as last year. Icon SPCs are back though. And again, this is awesome for people that just like to grind the menus and like to be able to attain a version of their icon, hopefully through an SBC and not having to grind the gameplay and this also means a ton for the market in terms of cards that will rise for SBC requirements. SBC fodder might maintain more of a more consistent price this year than last year going all over the place at certain times. Um, that's going to be some constant demand for those SBCs that we didn't have as much last year. So that's going to be interesting. And this honestly to me in terms of SBC fodder and investing is going to look a lot more like it could look a lot more like FIFA 19. A combination of FIFA 19 and FIFA 20 where inform investing, where discard informs were very investable if they were high enough rated because people were turning in those cards for Icon SBCs all year long and there was consistent demand taking those cards off of the market when they weren't getting any more supply. So right away, looking at this, discard inform investing, I think I might have to dabble in that early on this year. We'll see. Uh, of course, they said here the first Icon SPC will not be introduced until late November. And if you actually take a look back at SPC fodder cards from last year, that is when all these cards banged because late November of last year, November 20th, 21st, 23rd, I think the day was, or maybe the 20, yeah, 23rd was when we got the repeat, the repeatable baby Icon SPC last year. 
on this November 23rd time frame. So it's basically, I would expect this graph for Yorisa's new card this year in FIFA 20 to look exactly the same as his graph last year. It would, it would stay high, become SBC fodder, get really low, and then spike when that icon SBC would come out the first day. As long as it is a popular player, of course, it's not repeatable, so there might not be as much demand, but it's an icon SBC and people will get kind of excited about that. Now, the only issues that I have with this. Icon SBCs are not available permanently. They're only available long-term and they can be re-released. This is basically just EA covering their backside and saying, hey, we are just open. We're going to write this sentence in here so that we have the ability to re-release Icon SBCs at some point if we want to do that. Uh, so I guess that's a possibility and a risk that you take if you do an Icon SBC early on in the year. Just kind of have to weigh the value of I'm paying more for it now. It might be cheaper later. Is it worth the amount of games or, you know, the availability of that card in my club now than just waiting a couple months to get the SBC card later? Um, and that's what basically this means right here, the re-release date and stuff like that. I highlighted this though. Specific versions of icons will only be eligible, eligible for an SBC released after they've been released in packs for a period of time. So... In November, when we had those first SBCs, literally the only cards that we will be able to have Icon SBCs for will be Baby or Middle Items because those are the only cards that are in packs. And here's the other one. Uh, no specific version of an Icon. Base card, Prime card, Middle or Moments released through an SBC will be released again through Icon Swaps and vice versa. So here's a hypothetical example. Let's say they release a Fernando Torres middle SBC in November. First SBC, people are hyped. Fernando Torres, new icon, gets an icon SBC. Fernando Torres will not be in any more icon SBCs or icon swaps for the rest of the year. So it's kind of like how last year, if a car was in swaps and it was its baby version, you would never see the prime or the moments version or middle version later on down the road. Same thing here, but that also includes the SBCs this year as well. So if there's one player that you want to get, like let's say you want to get Fernando Torres, you're going to have only like one option to get that card untradeable through either an SBC or through an objective. That's the only issue with this that I'm not a huge fan of. I wish they would make all the cards readily available, at least a couple different chances for a couple different versions of the card um, throughout the game. That's my only kind of issue with that. Um, through an untradeable system. But um, uh, speaking through Icon SBCs, just the last part, this is a big one because this again screams FIFA 19 to me. We have to be careful with this, but you're gonna see a lot of people start investing in icons. As early as the start of the game, there's gonna be people that start buying icons and chucking them on their transfer list for that end of November timeframe. And especially like with this graph with Hugo Yoris, what you're gonna see with icons is is they're going to get low, they're going to be forgotten about, it's just going to be like last year, and then people are going to remember towards November time frame as we get in closer to Black Friday, hey, Icon SBCs are coming, Icons might be required. Now, I would expect Icons to be required later on in the year, maybe in like a, a January, February time frame around Team of the Year as, you know, Primes come into packs and if they release any of the top level Prime cards, you know, Icons, the SBCs that required Icons are more of the upper tier, higher level ones, so... That's just something to keep in mind, but icons might be required. They're leaving that option open, and I think you're going to hear a lot of people that are going to invest in that, and it's going to be very profitable at some point this year for sure. So that's Icon SBCs. They are back, but, you know, they're back, right? But they're back like they're going to be out in the game. So that's hype and GG's EA for that. Thank you for listening and at least putting those back out, even though it may not be the same way as before. Icon swaps is basically the exact same. It's going to start later this year, which is interesting for me. And there's going to be a greater mix between icon and pack rewards. And the pack rewards are going to cost less tokens, which is a GG. We like that EA Sports. That's going to allow for just a lot more possibilities for, let's say you get 24 icon swap tokens and an icon pack only costs you eight, eight swap tokens instead of 18, like it did in one of the first one or two sets of icon swaps. That's just going to allow you to get more icons in your club. And one person mentioned to me today, and I think this is a very good shout, you're going to be able to get icon SBCs or do icon swaps and then get an untradeable icon and chuck that into SBCs. So if there's like 24 tokens available and you can get three icons for like, you know, six, seven, and eight tokens, I don't even know if that math adds up, which yeah, it does, right? It's eight and seven, 15 plus six, 23. 
Uh, so yeah, you could, if there's that option there, which EA is probably thinking about already thinking about that through and maybe not going to let it happen, but you could do icon swaps, get all your tokens and then get three untradeable players that you would then use to an icon SBC that you wanted. If the SBC is better than the swaps, just something to think about if they're making some of the rewards for player token values less. All right. Just something to kind of think about there. Companion app is coming out on the web, uh, the web app first, September 30th, which by the way, you can access if you don't have a PC, if you have a tablet or a phone, you can actually go on the companion, the web app. You can go on the web app on your phone. If you go into an internet browser and view as a desktop, you can actually do that. So that's just kind of a, a hack for you guys. If you want to do that, there's also going to be these competitive game viewership rewards. So basically that just means watch the EA events, link your Twitch and their EA accounts, and then leave the tab open. Uh, you don't even have to watch and you'll be able to get these tokens that you can redeem for packs, which is the GG. Last thing, put foot preseason rewards, all those packs that we grinded objectives for, they're going to be available by October 16th. So hopefully they're available right away, but they're telling us that at least by October 16th, they're going to be giving us a lot of stuff. So again, really quick wrap up. There's a ton in here. There is a lot to talk about. And honestly, the stuff that I'm worried about the most right now is early access and ones to watch because these two things are gonna be affecting us right away off the rip and we're gonna be seeing the impact of these new SBCs, of these new objectives right away, all right? So this is what I would focus on right now if I were you guys because I do think this is gonna impact the market. Think through maybe how this might even impact your start to FIFA 21 and as we see these objectives roll out next in the next four or five days as the game is released, we'll kind of dissect that stuff then when we have more information. But sorry for the long video. I just want to get this information out to you guys, and hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, smash a thumbs up, comment down below if you have any questions, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's been Nate, the Food Accountant. Catch you guys later. Peace out.